Hello and welcome to this special session of the Council of the Town of Oakville. We're meeting to receive the State of the Town address that I give every year at this time. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any regrets this evening? I believe we have regrets from Councillor Parmar. All right. And uh, Council, uh, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? I'm having trouble imagining there would be any, but uh, Madam Clerk, there are none showing, so there are none. The first and only item on the agenda, Council, is the Mayor's Annual Oakville Status Report, the State of the Town Address. And uh, I'm uh, very happy to see you all here for it. And uh, I have a presentation. Because the reaction was so positive last year when I used slides for the 2019 Livable Oakville Progress Report, I'm back for 2020 with another slideshow. In this slideshow, just like last year, I'm going to briefly cover the structure of our town, the services of our town, the trends we're seeing, the needs that we're still working on, and the vision that guides us. I like to start by reminding everybody that municipalities are created by the province as municipal service delivery corporations. All municipal powers come from the province and the province has a veto over how we use them. So to a certain degree, being in the municipal sector can feel like playing a game among adults of mother may I. We are one of four local partners of a two-tier cooperative municipal services body. That body is called the Regional Municipality of Halton. And that's been in place since 1974. I mention that because I still meet people who have successfully ignored the existence of the region of Halton as a factor in the municipal scene. I've got a schematic that helps you visualize it. You have Oakville, Burlington, Milton, and Halton Hills uh, put together back in 1974. Uh, back in 1974, we were all individual towns and cities, and uh, now we are this two-tier creature. And what that means is we deliver some municipal services at the local level, and the really big ones that benefit from cooperation are delivered at the upper level. And to constitute the council of the upper level, we have 24 people, and they ascend from the lower councils. In Burlington, they have seven uh, councillors locally, and those seven serve on the region. In Milton, they have 11 councillors locally, and five of them come to the region. In Halton Hills, they've got nine, three of whom come to the region. And in Oakville, we have 15, eight of whom come to the region. And it's worth noting that our council of 15 actually costs less than the Burlington Council of, se of seven, and that's because they have a bunch of staff to support those councillors that we don't have here. To make 24, we elect a chair throughout the region during the municipal election. All municipal powers are exercised only by resolutions by councils. This is important, and, and, and the main reason it's important is that some people think the mayor has more power than the mayor really has, or that a councillor has more power than a councillor really has. We all have to work together, or at least put another way, there has to be a majority on each council for anything to start or stop. Now, it is true that the mayor also has special duties of being the chief executive officer for the town or city, but those CEO duties are the leadership and informing uh, parts of being a CEO, not the executive authority. So as a result, I'm proud to say that our councils seek consensus. I think this has been a hallmark of uh, Oakville and Halton and the other municipalities for almost all of the, uh, of the long time that uh, we've had this two-tier structure. Now, in Oakville, we are divided into seven wards, and the first ward in the southwest is represented by Beth Robertson and Sean O'Meara. 
the next ward is the South Central, and that's represented by Ray Chisholm and Kathy Duddock. In the Southeast, the councillors are Janet Hazlitt Thiel and Dave Giddings. In the Northwest, sort of, we call it Ward 4, we have Peter Longo and Alan Elgar. In the, in the uh, center, we have Ward 5, Mark Grant and Jeff Knoll. In what we can agree is the Northeast, we have Natalia Lischina and Tom Adams for Ward 6. And in the new ward, Ward 7, we have Town Councilor Jasvinder Sanju and Town and Regional Councilor Havan Palmer. And then I, uh, I complete council and bring us to 15. Now, let's talk about the services and the state of our services as uh, we look at 2020. Municipal services are, uh, they, they run from regional to local. The green ones, the green bars here represent uh, the cost to the Oakville taxpayer of the local services, and the uh, brown or orange bars represent the Oakville share, the cost to the Oakville taxpayer, of these regional services. So for example, to point out the police bar, the police column uh, says 70 million and that's how much of the police spending comes from Oakville. The rest of the police spending of more than 170 million for that year comes from the other municipalities in Halton. The Halton property tax dollar, which is of interest when we talk about whether we do something at the region or at the local level. When you, when you do a service at the regional level, 42 cents of the cost comes out of Oakville. And that's because Oakville has more rateable or taxable property than the others have. And what we get for our taxes is, again, this is the money coming out of Oakville. Uh, for the almost 200 million uh, from Oakville, we get fire, library, parks, rec, streets, and transit. For the 180 odd million that we give to the region, we get the emergency services, that's the ambulance, the garbage, the uh, housing corporation, housing, social housing, the police service, the roads, and other services, such as administering welfare on behalf of the province. You would think that that would be a pass through from the province, but we actually are underfunded in that area, and so uh, a contribution comes from the taxpayers. There's also at the region the water service, which is another $360 million. And when you add up all of the municipal services from Halton Hills, Milton, Burlington, and Oakville, and the region of Halton, it's um, more than $2 billion. And that compares to, say, for the city of Toronto, a total of $13 billion. And the city of Toronto is 2.7 million. The region of Halton is 600,000. You can do the math to see that we're, uh, we're um, I will say, more efficient or more economical. So uh, just to emphasize, it's more than $2 billion going on. And at the town level, it's around 300 million when you add in the capital that we spend on infrastructure and maintenance of our infrastructure. So what are the trends that we're seeing around us? The total property tax increases before we started using performance-based program budgeting or outcomes management is displayed on this chart. And what it shows you is that we had a very, first we had a very spiky experience. And so from one year to the next, uh, it was difficult for homeowners to budget. And you can also see by the trend line that the direction was uh, upward and, and not at any gradual path. Since we introduced outcomes management and the associated policies of limiting tax increases at or below inflation, you see a much more manageable uh, experience for the taxpayer in terms of budgeting and you also see the downward trend. So in 2020, the Oakville tax increase for all municipal services, that's uh, not just the town, but the region and education, was a 2% increase. Burlington was 2.44%. Mississauga was three and a quarter, and Toronto was four and a quarter. 
Now, we got a new library and a new rec center and a new fire station for our money. And in Toronto, I would just point out that the municipal land transfer tax gave them another $800 million in tax money that's not really captured by their four and a quarter percent tax increase. And when you factor that in, it's as if they had a 5.05 percent tax increase. The actual full property tax rate in Oakville gets calculated or reset down every year. And that's because as the value of property goes up, the law by the province requires us to restate the tax rate so that there's no, there's never a windfall profit. I, I say this every year because there's a lot of people who believe that somehow there's a magic uh, to rising assessment that gives the town uh, a profit. And, and this is important to dispel that myth. So that reassessment is announced every year in your tax bill. Um, and these taxes fund your local services, your regional services, and your schools. And uh, we use seven fiscal tools in order to achieve that, that downward trend that I've, that I've described for you. The first is we, the previous government, reversed downloads to the municipal sector that the Harris government had introduced uh, back in the 90s. The second is that uh, our council determined 14 years ago, when I became mayor, to maximize development fees uh, rather than subsidize uh, development. And in, in, over the last 14 years, there's been discounts and exemptions in the development charge statute of the province that left us still subsidizing growth to a degree but not as badly as, it, as we did before we maximized our development fees. We also uh, reduced our tax paid debt by 88%, and that reduced the amount that we were spending on interest and principal repayment. We uh, created new non-tax revenue by having our, uh, we created two uh, municipal entities, Oakville Enterprise Corporation, and the Oakville Municipal Development Corporation. And those two corporations, whose boards are constituted by local business leaders and highly experienced men and women in business, have uh, increased the amount of non-tax revenue to the town in the form of dividends from the, the success they've had in uh, developing businesses that are related to either the, uh, the use of surplus town property or the creation of a service, industry, service businesses along the energy sector. Now, uh, we also linked user fees to the consumer price index. What I, could sh what I showed council 14 years ago was that because user fees had been held down, that was contributing to the um, uh, annual increases in property taxes being uh, greater than inflation. So you know, you if you if you squeeze the one, you you boost the other, and that also has helped us turn in a better tax performance. Uh, PB2 or outcomes management, I've already mentioned, and uh, we've also adopted regular value and efficiency audits that save two and three million dollars every two or three years when we do them. They're very disruptive and extensive and hard to do, so you, you can't just do them at the snap of a finger. And I want to point out uh, credit where credit is due. In this pandemic period of COVID, we've had uh, challenges to our finances, and the province has paid our COVID costs of about $6 million. And that's set us up pretty well for uh, turning in a good performance this year. And, uh, and we will see as we uh, continue in the rest of this year with our budget, we'll see how we're going to do uh, for next year's budget. I'm optimistic and confident that we'll keep to our policy of not having uh, tax increases greater than inflation. Now, another trend that I'm very proud of is that we're uh, for 14 years in a row, we're number one in safety in Canada, and we are the top town for livability. And uh, 14 years ago, we were 30th. 
And I attribute this not only to council and the many fine policies and, and very good facilities that we've built and uh, the good roads that we've uh, uh, focused on having, but this town has a unique level of community engagement and that generates a social health that uh, I attribute to our many strong places of worship, the many strong civil society organizations ranging from charities to residence associations. Now, that's not to say that we don't still have needs. I'd like to talk for a moment about how we're meeting our needs. We've been able to see poverty improving, and that's largely thanks to the uh, increase in social housing opportunities that we've been able to do at the regional municipality of Halton. Social housing is expensive enough that we do that on a cooperative level among the four local municipalities that comprise Halton. So our community safety and well-being plan is a regional plan. We also administer Ontario Disability Support Payments and Ontario Works. And over the last 14 years, we've created the Halton Community Investment Fund, which we've, we've increased from $800,000 to $3.3 million a year. And that uh, money is used to support the uh, civil society charities and uh, agencies that help the vulnerable in our town. We've also got a very strong United Way. Every year I raise about $200,000 for that in my uh, various uh, uh, charitable uh, sports events. Uh, we also have uh, community benefits from time to time from uh, growth where, where bonusing is used. Bonusing is, is leaving the scene because of certain changes at the province. And uh, we also have, thanks to the United Way, the Halton Poverty Roundtable, which has been working on ways to in, uh, improve life for the vulnerable. And then the biggest benefit of all is the Canada Child Benefit increase by the federal government. And that uh, a reduction of poverty of 20% has been attributed to that. We have some policy needs ahead of us that I think uh, that I'd like to call on everybody to work together with me on developing because these are in, uh, vital to our success as a community. Uh, we're engaged right now in an obligatory uh, official plan review for the Halton official plan that's required by the province to be done every five years or so. Same thing for the Oakville official plan and we're doing those in concert with the, the region so that uh, we can avoid as much contradiction as possible. Uh, I don't believe you can miss the notices that the region and the town have been handing out for the public consultations involved in that, and I urge you to be involved. The new rules in the province around uh, growth are such that uh, I think it's fair to say that the province's position is uh, the public is only wanted, the public's input is only really wanted at the front end, and that would be at these official plan review points. After, after this cake is baked, the slices that come off of it are not subject to a lot of um, change, uh, at least from the public in the new Ontario system. We also need a diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. And this is such a big need that I think we, and I, and I mean for the community as a whole, and that I think needs to be done at the regional level and uh, you know, bringing together all of our local municipalities. We live together, work together, and play together across this region. And, uh, and we, we all have family and friends across the region. And that's where this needs to go. I'm very proud of the fact that for uh, seven years, we've had the Halton Equity and Diversity uh, Roundtable. And that is the vehicle that I think we can use to create this diversity, equity, and inclusion plan. We also, at the town level, I believe, need to review and refresh our strategic plan. Every four years, we do a major look at it, and every year, we do a, a, a quick look at it. But now, in the middle of this term, at the two-year mark, I think it's time for a uh, bigger than minor review and perhaps less than major review, but we need to make sure that we get this right in order to have the most effective term, this four-year term possible. 
we have implemented or adopted a community energy plan, but the community energy plan needs the programs that will implement it. And that's why I mentioned that here too. These five things are the big jobs ahead of us. As we look at our progress on our 10-year plan, we can take pride in the accomplishment of finishing the Southeast Oakville Community Center. The Brawny Outer Harbor acquisition is complete. The Trafalgar Community and Senior Center was finished last year, and the downtown Oakville Village streetscape renewal is ending now. Advancing our vital projects to build the Wycroft Road Bridge, to uh, uh, complete the grade separations for Burl Oak and Kerr, and, uh, to, uh, and the regional social housing and roads and water work, they're continuing, and the electrification of our transit fleet and building of electric vehicle charging stations is also now underway. Vital and uh, not yet finished is the North Park Rec Center and the Phase Two playing fields. Not only not finished, not even begun, but um, in my view, a, a very, very strongly needed project. We also have the heritage designated Oakville Trafalgar High School that we need to repurpose and reuse in some adaptive way. When you're a champion of heritage conservation and preservation, uh, like we are, it means that uh, you can't have a heritage designated building boarded up forever. And so I'm calling on uh, council to work with me to get that project completed. We also uh, have ahead of us the need to deal with the Midtown Growth Center bridges, roads, and fixed to the QEW. And the good news there is there's been signs now from the province that they might agree with us that the, the uh, block that's keeping their urban growth center, which is around the 250 acres around the uh, Oakville GO station, the busiest GO station in the system, the block that's preventing that provincial growth center from happening is their province's QEW. So there may be some progress to look forward to uh, on that. In addition, we need to continue to work to create downtown public waterside attractions and access to the waterfront to uh, increase the reasons for people to go downtown and keep our historic downtown vital and successful. We also need a second parking structure with a rooftop feature down there. Can you imagine a say a four-story parking structure and the rooftop feature would uh, uh, give yet another reason to go down uh, it'd be an attraction i mean at the very least could you imagine a patio with a lake view from from there could be very nice and uh longer term council has a unanimously adopted downtown cultural hub renewal and expansion plan and uh we're looking to our Municipal Development Corporation and the Oakville Enterprises Corporation to come up with the funding for that. Now, municipalities have many moving parts. You've probably heard me say before. And our municipal parts are still moving very well. We've managed through the pandemic, just as we did through the Great Recession, with no significant losses. And that's partly because the province of Ontario and Canada have stepped up to guide us and help fight the pandemic and to help us with the costs. In addition to that, the Ford Motor Company and the Ontario government and Canada came together in an unprecedented way to save the Oakville Assembly Plant and the tens of thousands of jobs across Ontario and indeed the rest of Canada in the auto parts industry and in raw materials uh, refining and processing, all of which feeds into the Oakville Assembly Plant and, uh, and also saves uh, the thousands of direct jobs in that plant. So we owe a great debt of thanks to the leadership, not just of Canada and Ontario, but also to the Ford Motor Company in the United States, who decided uh, after a very, very tense and suspenseful summer that the Oakville Assembly Plant was worth saving. Now, this shows that Oakville keeps moving forward, even in adversity. And I think we can all be proud of that because we all had a hand in our success. Black Lives Matter has shown us during this year that we must come together to fight racism. 
We've got to make sure that no one is left out and that no one is left behind and that everybody feels comfortable and accepted in our community. We got to remember, I like to remind people, that three races founded Oakville and they founded Oakville with a, with a goal and a vision of harmony and prosperity. And uh, that's why I think it's important to acknowledge the indigenous, white, and black settlers who gathered here and lived together seeking harmony and prosperity long before the 1857 recognition of the settlement by the Ontario legislature when, when Oakville was officially created a town. Now, it's time to say a word about our vision. People without a vision can wind up anywhere. If you don't know where you want to go, I guess you'll be happy with wherever you get. But in Oakville, we've written down our vision and it's a comprehensive set of plans. There's a central document called Vision 2057. And I would say the core part of that is the Livable Oakville Official Plan or Land Use Plan. That's what sets down what we want our community to look like. And the zoning bylaw, which descends from that and must conform to the official plan, is how we implement that vision. But these are informed by our heritage district plans and our area land use studies. And all of that is informed by our sustainability plans, whether it's our economic development strategic plan, our energy control, air quality, low energy, local food, bikes and paths and trails, our so-called active transportation, green energy, the enhanced natural heritage system. You can call that the municipal green belt because that's what it is. In, in the municipal green belt that we've created, 51% of Halton is protected open and green space and 30% of North Oakville, uh, which was uh, is saved in the first uh, natural heritage system, which became the enhanced natural heritage system of the region. And not to mention our 40% tree cover, uh, tree canopy cover goal. These come together in our infrastructure master plan and the infrastructure master plan feeds our development charges study and bylaw and that's where we make growth pay every, every bit of the cost of growth that we can. And because the provincial government um, has just, just this year and just recently reversed the Harris government uh, discounts and exemptions for developers, over the next two years, uh, the legislature has now implemented a new statute that takes away those exemptions and um, and discounts and uh, gradually uh, phases in the, the full recovery of growth costs. And I have to thank the uh, current provincial government for that far-sighted and important change. All of this leads into our asset management plan and uh, we are very proud of our asset management plan because it's fully funded unlike our neighbors who have to borrow hundreds of millions of dollars in order to do the maintenance and renewal of their infrastructure, we have a uh, cash basis, fully funded asset management plan. And all of that leads us to our annual operating budgets and capital budgets. I hope this is useful to you. I think whenever you want to make a place better, you usually go, something's wrong, I want to fix it, or I want to get a change. When you have this roadmap to how all our plans work together, I hope this lets you see where to put your energy to get the change that you may want. Mind you, uh, you also have to get a lot of other, you have to get, uh, change requires uh, a certain amount of consensus and uh, community uh, engagement. So uh, I recommend that you remember uh, how important community engagement is. So our vision is to have outstanding staff services and facilities and the most sustainable region in Canada. The, we, we believe in fully funded asset management. Uh, our vision includes controlling growth, debt and taxes. Uh, our vision includes strong discretionary reserves so that when nature or disease throws us a curveball, it doesn't flatten us. And uh, our vision is to be Canada's most livable town. We, we have a vision that we must have diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. No one should be left out or left behind. 
Our vision is to continue to be the safest region in Canada. We believe in developing new non-tax revenues so that we can afford the high quality services and facilities that uh, our residents want without having uh, higher taxes to, uh, to uh, burden us. And uh, we also have as a key part of our vision that we keep our community engaged. We work really hard at that. Luckily, that's not, uh, it's not a really big challenge because it seems like uh, Oakville attracts people who want to be engaged in making their community better. We keep our taxes at or under CPI, uh, and uh, I don't see that changing. And uh, we seek climate resilience, and all of that adds up to being a greener and cleaner place to live. So our mission, in a nutshell, is livable Oakville, Canada's most livable town, and sustainable Halton, Canada's most sustainable regional municipality. Our motto is Avance. That's just a fancy word for keep moving forward. And the Great Recession and the Great Pandemic have shown that Oakville keeps moving forward, even in adversity. Thank you for your time and attention. I look forward to continuing to serve you. Council, um, thank you for your attention to my remarks. And uh, I hope to work with you uh, over the coming two years to bring as much of our program to fruition as possible. And I know that as you have in the past, you will continue to work constructively together for our common vision as we have for so many years. Um, would would uh, two of you be interested in uh, moving and seconding receipt of the presentation? Councillor Sanju, thank you. Councillor Lischina, thank you. Um, is there any objection to the motion? Madam Clerk, there's no objection and the report is received. Um, Council, that completes the agenda for tonight. If we didn't have a pandemic, I would invite everybody to join me somewhere for a celebration, uh, but uh, we'll have to do that virtually. Uh, but you know, we, volu we volunteer to serve on council because we enjoy this kind of community work. And I know that uh, uh, we all look forward to working together as the rest of, you know, we're in the midpoint, so we have two more years. Um, can we get a mover and seconder for the confirmatory bylaw? Councillor Duddock and Councillor Longo, thank you. Any objection? Madam Clerk, there's, there's no objection. And that completes the agenda. It's been terrific uh, working with you for the last two years, and I know it will be for the next. And I, I hope that everyone who sees the presentation uh, in the public will join us in the important work ahead. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.